name recognition of the I mean today I found an application I couldn't even tell you the name it starts with K4 and it's basically an application which replicates a, an application for other platforms including Windows and it goes through your entire hard drives and maps uh, all the files by size and it allows you to find big files and, and, and directories this is a very nice application but I wouldn't know it by name unless I was searching uh, using iXquick uh, and just searching for some of the graphical uh, uh, um, disk space utilities and uh, and this was one of the first one they listed because I was looking for a very specific type of thing now the issue is when a person comes to Linux slash Linux he or she will not know what they're looking for uh, they will know things by brands. I'm looking for the, you know, the blue E, or I'm looking for uh, my uh, my office, you know, my office or my Outlook or something. That's the issue. And when you say to them a long word like Thunderbird, then what the hell is that? Thunderbird. It sounds immediate. It sounds like you know Thundercats or something. And their immediate reaction, just like I don't know it. I don't want. You know, and 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 that's 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 really the biggest concern, I suppose. But then, I mean, Thunderbird itself, you know, with um, I mean, a lot of people now using the the web to uh, web using a browser, sorry, to access their email. Um, I always gauge the sort of mainstream trends by my parents because they're the last people to want to jump on board at a software package and learn it. Um, so what they're using tends to be, in my opinion, quite typical of the average user who has no interest in the computer that they've got just using it as a tool. Um, and my mother is using her email via the browser. Um, so even she knows that um, Outlook isn't isn't for her. And uh, so, so my father as well. Um, they both have their own ac accounts on the same machine and uh, just log in via the web page. Um, Talking of which, uh, just, just very briefly, um, I was saying about running Peppermint, but I do need to quickly mention two things. Firstly, Peppermint 4, I covered this on my website, and anybody who's looking to uh, move elsewhere, maybe they're disillusioned now uh, with Windows and they've, they like the XP environment or an XP type environment, please, please have a look at Peppermint 4. Uh, fantastic uh, distro. Um, very very small, very tight and compact. Um, it's got leaning towards a cloud, but in no way forces you to go that way. And you can quite easily install by the software center, which works in the same way as your mobile phone software center. Um, as many locally installed packages as you like. Um, very very quick. In fact, I don't think you'll find a quicker distro um, as it stands because your speed is really only limited by the amount of time it takes to load up a web browser and services you're accessing and your uh, your broadband speed. But that would be to do with the desktop environment. Uh, uh, I mean yeah, the Linux yeah. is Linux. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so, I mean it's it's a very punchy distribution. It doesn't load anything um that you wouldn't need immediately. Everything is if you want to install things obviously that's up to you. But the the package that you presented with when you install it from the disk is very simple simple and um, everything is ready to go onto the net and it's got that in mind. Like I said, if you want to take that to a locally installed stage later, that's that's your choice. But and it's whatever happened with uh, Mozilla had a kind of boot to Firefox thing. Sorry, and Mozilla had a kind of initiative at least maybe two years ago, something about booting into Firefox. It's not Firefox OS. But there were several, I can think of even Presto from Zandros. Uh, so some companies were trying to market this idea of just basically booting a browser with mm. an operating system as an open shell, something along the lines of what you've just described. But I don't think it ever really succeeded no. so much. I mean, it, it, Chrome it was OS quite, is not quite that. It's something different. No, there was Joe. There was Joe Cloud. I uh, remember that one. That's I think I believe that's still going. Um, Jolly Cloud was virtually nothing more than a, a booting into a browser. A, um, no, they were named. They used to be called Jolly something else. What, what was I, the can't come. Name? I, come. I mean, at the time, I mean, that was very pioneering stuff because at the time, we didn't have the infrastructure available to the average user to make that worthwhile, in my opinion. Now we've got Google Drive, for example, offering you storage space at one point, um, £1.49 
for 100 gigabytes. Um, you've got all these online services and apps. I mean, I, I said to you, I think a few weeks back, there's, you can even run this a web ba a web based Amiga emulator now, which runs absolutely perfectly, um, which allows you to emulate the old Amiga range of computers without having to even install a single thing on your computer. Um, so, I mean, we're at a very different level now in terms of the cloud and in terms of online applications than we were all those years ago. Um, so, yeah, things like Jolly Cloud were quite sort of, you know, pioneering at the time, but really a bit before their time. Um, whereas now we are dedicated to, to being online. I mean, most people, if you switch off their net connection, really would sit and look at their computer screen and say, right, I'm going to go out and do something else. Because most, so much of the stuff that we do um, on an average level is, is to do with the, with the internet now, um, be it social networking or just uh, playing computer games even now. Um, can I just make one other mention which we failed to do I believe in the last episode and that was the software we're using to record this. Um, for people that have listened to the show in my dulcet tones for far too many years um, will remember we used to use Skype a long time ago. We didn't like using it, um, we had issues with it, but at the time it was one of the only ways we could uh, connect up uh, without many errors and get a reasonably sounding uh, show together um, and get it out there. So the views on using Skype itself were put to one side. And luckily when Microsoft took over Skype, we discovered Mumble at the same time because we, um, we were looking for an alternative. And that's what we're using now. And Mumble, if you haven't used it, is absolutely fantastic package. It's not the same type of thing that you'd get from Skype. It's not built to have a, an address book and be a, a sort of a, a telephone system or VIOP, uh, VOIP, sorry, uh, system. It, it's meant for online gaming and it's meant to get communities together talking to each other. But we're using it at the moment, and as you can hear, it's working very well. It's very simple to use and thoroughly recommend it. I'm sure Roy will back me up on the. Yeah, lots of features, and uh, it's very simple to use. Uh, it also puts security. Uh, as a kind of high priority and you have to establish a connection with SSL um, so with certificates too so uh, it seems to be designed by integrating a whole bunch of uh, open source packages uh, you can uh, it's possible when you actually install it you can see which ones they are uh, and, and this is a very good example of uh, where in my, I'm not sure on your side, but on my side, it it also uses uh, Qt4, so it uses a very nicely KDE type environment uh, with wizards and everything. It looks very native and it looks very nice. Um, the the one thing that should be mentioned though is this is marketed strangely enough as more of a gamers um, environment for for chats and and I think it's a bit of a you know, a lot. Of, it's kind of a missed opportunity because this is a really fantastic application that could be expanded to be more, you know, more easily used as a um, as an alter alternative to all the SIP clients the team and I have been investigating is investigating over the years. Um, and oh, and what, oh, what I was going to say, what well, about Bumble? I don't know what version you're using, Roy, but mine's one point two point three point. Four nine as well, um, but that was the one that came out of my uh, my repo. But um, what I like about this Are you using Qt on it, Qt. Yes, one point two point three. So um, what I was going to say was what what I particularly like about Mumble is it's very very transparent. In that, at the moment, Roy is recording um, this whole uh, conversation. Obviously, this is part of the show, which you'll put through a few um, audio processes before he'll. Uh, put it out onto the net. But the nice thing is, by his name, there's a little red dot which lets me know he's recording. And when he presses the recording button, like I'm about to now, you'll hear it works. So hopefully that... I'm not that, sure it will be audio. Oh, right, right, didn't it, right. record. I was hoping that would come out over the thing, but basically yeah, it tells you very voice clearly. Voice synthesis, basically, yeah. inside your application. Um, it's, it's a really nice package, and like Roy was saying, completely wasted um, in terms of the other applications it could be put to if um, if it was not sold or marketed, that's not the right word, but introduced to other people. Because, um, I mean, it's, it's virtually 
a VOIP IRC is what how I look at it because you have so many servers there doesn't appear to be any sort of um, rules in terms of which servers you can connect to if you can connect to them I assume you